If you have a website on Squarespace or pretty much any other platform out there, you're probably also wondering how you can collect inquiries and what happens when they fill out that form. And also, where do they get that form? <laughs> Well, if you're on Squarespace, there's actually a block that's built into the platform, which you can use on any page of your website, and it's super easy to set up and use. And guess what? You don't need any external software in order to get the submissions to you. <laughs> so I'm actually going to walk you through that today, all the ins and outs, pros and cons, and a couple of little hacks that you might not know for how to make this a little bit easier. But before I dive into that, if we haven't met before, my name is Caitlin, and I run Launch the Damn Thing. I am a Squarespace educator and web designer, and I've got a lot of tips like this to share, and I'm really excited to dive in, so I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's hop on into my account. <laughs> so this is an example of a very basic contact page on one of my demo sites, and this is what the form actually does. So you can have the form in a couple of different ways. There's one style that is called a light box which basically just means it opens the actual form itself in a pop-up and it kind of hides it underneath the button, so to speak. So no one can see the actual form until they click on the open button and that can say whatever you want. Then from here, they can fill it out and they can submit and the submission goes into wherever you tell it to go of the options that are available. The other option is one of these that is embedded, so you can actually see the whole form. You don't have to hide it behind a light box. So knowing those two things, if you go into your Squarespace account, all you need to do is click Add Block and then choose the Form option. That will give you a new form that you can embed on the page. And from that form settings, which I've already had it here, so I'm just gonna edit those. You have the content available. This is very important. Make sure you name the form because the forms in Squarespace are not global, meaning wherever you put the form on the page, that is the only place that it lives. It can't also be on another page that would be like one form pasted in a bunch of different areas or showing up in a different bunch of different areas and synced between the pages. That doesn't work natively in Squarespace without some other hacks. Don't worry, I will show you those later. <laughs> but without using plugins, you can't use one form across the entire site, right? So you need to name it in case you have a duplicate show up on another page. And then when people use that duplicate form, you'll know which ones, which pages people are actually filling out forms in. It's just good to know for future reference and also for other reasons, which I'll explain later. So make sure you name the form. So this is not necessarily something that people will see. If you use the light box feature of forms where it pops open and shows the whole form in an overlay menu, then you'll see the name of the form. If you embed the form, you won't see the name of the form. So it depends on how you use the form as to whether or not people actually see what you called it. The next thing is the button text. That's what shows up on the form itself, not the open button. So if you have the form set to show the entire thing where it's not light boxed, this button right here is the button text for submitting the actual form not the light box form. So the difference here would be the button text is submit. If you go under design and turn the toggle on for light box, you have this additional button text, which is the open button text, which basically just, you can say whatever you want here. Let's go back and turn that light box feature off so we can see the rest of the fields. This is the default way that Squarespace kind of sets it up, name, email, message. Those are the three options. But if you click on the edit form fields option. This is where you can see the three default that you will have. Anytime you ever add a form to a page, you'll get those three fields. You can click here to remove any of those fields if you want to. And you can see I've added a few more myself. That is through this button down here, add field. If you click that, you'll see about 18 or 20 different other options that you can add. And you can have as many of these as you want. You can have more than one type of field on the page. One of the fun things about the email field that they recently adjusted is the email signup option. If you toggle that on, you get this extra little check mark so that someone who submits their form is also allowed to say that they want to sign up for updates. Now, this is like I say that with a caveat. 
that is related to which email service you're using. And you can edit the confirmation email here, but I think Squarespace did this with the mindset that you would be using their email campaigns. That's not actually a platform that I recommend because I don't think that the best bang for your buck is in that service. You're, you would be paying for an add-on, but you don't get all the features that you would even get on like MailChimp or ConvertKit or Flowdesk or basically any other <laughs> platform. So it's great for a starter if that's what you're needing right now, but just do that with the knowledge that you will probably have to migrate your subscribers somewhere else eventually. So that's an option. You can definitely turn that on. There is also something called a line field. And I often use this to kind of add a privacy disclaimer at the bottom. I'll give you the code snippet for that in the blog post or in the description below. So basically I've just put in some text. We respect your this part and then privacy. And then I've added a whole bunch of HTML to it to italicize underline and hyperlink that privacy button so that that is actually clickable and I'm telling it where to send people when they click on the word privacy that goes to the actual legal slash privacy page that I have on this demo site. So that's actually what that is. And again, I'll give you that code snippet in the description below or in the accompanying blog post for this video. If you want the underline, you can toggle that on, but I usually turn it off when I'm using it in that way. But also the line field is a great way to segment your form if you have a lot of fields because it can act like sort of a heading for a new section of information. So that's an option. Anything that you add that has options to it, you have this options area where you can click and add as many additional options as you want. Once they are here, then you can also click the edit button and remove them. They're also drag and droppable, even though that's probably not something that you would have noticed had I not shown you. <laughs> So you can rearrange the options. That also works for the checkbox field and a few of the others like the radio and the drop down. You can also, as you notice, see the little drop, drag and drop thing here. So as you're adding fields, if you realize, oops, I should have added that earlier, you can always click the edit button and drag it back up to the top if you want to rearrange them. So there's a lot of options that you can do here with the built-in features. So next you go back to the content tab, you're exiting out of the edit form fields area. That's where we just were. So now you go down to the post submit and you have two options here. You can add a text message that will display in place of the form after they click submit. So this would just basically say, thank you. We'll respond within one business day. It's great to put something here that will give them some sort of inclination of how quickly they can expect you to respond to their submission. Uh, and there's a little bit of rich formatting you can do here, including a link to another page if you want to be able to send them to like an onboarding page or um, some sort of like more information page while they wait for you to respond. That's always a good thing to do. Or you can simply create a new page on your website that's specifically meant for people who submit their form submissions to see immediately following submitting the form. So for example, if you wanted them to book an appointment with you, you could send them directly to your Calendly link or your Acuity link or to a page where you've embedded a scheduler. You can also just link here to a built-in thank you page that can be just totally generic with an image and a literal word that says thank you and that's it. So there's a couple of options for what happens after people submit their form. No, you don't have to use it, but I do think it's a good idea to do one of these two options. So the next stage would be from, that's all your content. Next, we're gonna go to the design tab and we've kind of looked at this before. So you can turn on the light box feature. You can also edit the button text for that light box button. You can give the whole form block a background from here if you want to. And you can also choose the alignment of the button itself in the block that you put it in. <laughs> and then the last option and the most important is what happens when people submit the actual form? Where does that submission data go? So if you click on storage, you're going to have a few options here. A new one is this manage submissions area, and I'll show you where that is in just a minute. The most important option is for you to put in an email address. This will give you an emailed copy of every person who submits this form. So put in your email address. The additional options down here are for Google Drive. So if you click connect here, 
you'll get a pop-up window that will ask you to log into your Google account. You will have to give them permissions and then it will ask you to name the spreadsheet. So essentially what's happening here is we have connected this form on this page to a brand new Google Sheet in my Google Drive account and we're going to name it contact page demo. And that means that all of the sub of the people who submit this form, that data will go to two places. It will be emailed to my email address and it will also get dumped into the sheet. So I have a actual database of all the people who have submitted this form. That's a great way to have kind of a backup system just in case the email were to misfire. I've not seen that happen more than a couple of times over like eight years, but it could. You can also connect it to Zapier if you need to attach some sort of automations to the submission process. So if they submit a form, maybe it can trigger this other thing to happen. And if you do that, it's always a good policy to have it also connected to Google Drive, again, for that database backup. If you happen to be using MailChimp, you can also connect it to MailChimp and dump the information into your MailChimp account. So there are three options there for actual storage. And then you can also turn on the Google reCAPTCHA option. Okay, so that's the basics of the form. There's a lot more I could tell you, but that's where I'm gonna end for now. So if we save our changes and we exit, then we can see that we have a contact form. So let's fill that out really quick. Okay, so I've just filled out an example form. Now let's open my email and see what that email submission looks like. Okay, so this is the copy of the email from Squarespace. It's saying that it's coming from this website and it has all of the fields that I put in the form. It also has a manage submissions button. So I can click that and it will open my website and go directly to the place where I can manage all of the form submissions. So let me back up because jumping right here might not tell you exactly where that location is. <laughs> so if we go back to the main website and we look at profiles, some of you will have a, a menu that looks like this. Some of you will have a menu that looks a little different. So look for either profiles or contacts. They're both going to be the same thing, depends on which version of Squarespace and their menu that you have access to when you're viewing this video. So they're both the same area. So click profiles or contacts, depending on which one you have. And then at the bottom, this form submitters where it says new, that's actually a new area. Wildly, for as long as Squarespace has been around, this hasn't been a thing until like midway through 2023. So this is new to us and we're really excited about it. <laughs> if you click on your entries here, you can see the form submission, you can tag it, you can add internal notes to it, you can look at the form details, and you can see that you can create a project with it. That's their new feature. I'm not going to go into that today. <laughs> but you can see a lot of details here right from the form submitters area. And if you have multiple forms, you can filter this list down to specific forms. And this is why I was telling you earlier that it's really important to name your form something that makes sense so that you not only know what kind of form it is, but also where the form is located so that you know where it was when that person filled it out. But it's a great way to filter through if you get lots of form submissions or have lots of different forms. So that's a quick rundown of all of the built-in features with Squarespace. So now that you know the basics about Squarespace forms, I'm guessing that you're probably wondering, okay, that's fine, but what if I just want one form, but I wanna show it in a few places? <laughs> that's smart. That's the efficient way to think about this. But you can't do that with Squarespace features alone. You do need a third party tool to help you get that done. So I'm going to show you my two favorite places to uh, pull from for that. The first of which is Will Myers plugin section loader supreme. Basically, that allows you to build a section on a standalone page. His plugin will allow you to insert that one section, that whole layout, whatever you put in it, in any other page. And it's not a duplicate, it's a sync. So it actually shows one set of things in multiple other places. <laughs> 
which basically allows you to have one place to edit that set of things, right? So it's great for newsletter blocks, opt-ins, ads, um, forms. <laughs> There's a lot of use cases for this. That's option number one. You can do this and that's it. You can also instead do this with SQSP themes, Squarespace, Lightbox, anything plugin. This works in a very similar way, except it actually creates a pop-up. So you can, just like you would with this one, build a page with the stuff on it that you want to display in other areas of the website, except that this one allows you to open whatever that layout is in a pop-up from any page, from any link. This one works not embedded into the website page necessarily, but it actually works or is triggered by a button or a hyperlink of some sort. So that works for linked text, linked buttons, or linked images. So it's very versatile and works in a lot of use cases. Either plugin will allow you to buy a standard license for one user or a business license so that you can have it on multiple websites. For people like me, that's a great option. <laughs> So I've installed both of those plugins on this demo site so that I can show you how they work. You will have to buy them yourself because I am not going to give you the code for the installation, but I will show you how it actually functions. So this top section here is a normal form block. It is all right here in the section, just like you see it. This duplicated section is using Willmeyer's section loader. So this form, is actually on some other page of the website. And this is the little code snippet that Will gives you to actually insert whatever section from whatever page. This is the same thing in this duplicated copy of that section. So essentially in this version, this is the embedded form on that other page. And this one is showing the light box form on that other page. And the difference here is that his little snippet will show you what it's loading in the kind of preview. <laughs> so it's not going to show you what it looks like, but it is going to show you what it will load here, which is really fascinating and super useful. So you don't actually have to open the code block and look at the slug that you put into his snippet. So before I move on to the lightbox anything portion of this, let me show you what it's actually grabbing. We'll start with the version that I created that is the embedded form. So we'll start with this one, I think. Yes. Okay. So what I did was I created a page and I gave the URL slug for this page on my own website, contact-form. This is all that's on this page. Whatever will load in Willmeyer section loader will not include the header or the footer on this page, just the section where this form exists. If you use this option from Will, I do suggest that you make the form as wide as the section. That way the form will be as wide as the block that you put it in later. <laughs> I know that's confusing, but just do it. <laughs> The form is all set. I just made a copy of it, put it over here, and then clicked exit. I just need to know this URL slug before I add it over in the contact page. So if we scroll down to that one, that is this option, section loader form not light boxed. So you can see this little snippet is pulling this page from my website and loading in this block. That's all it's doing. <laughs> so if I repeat that step and we scroll up a little bit here, this form is actually being lightboxed in the other version. So let's go take a look at that one instead. Notice the slug here is contact-form-lb. So that is the page we need to look for in my pages menu to make edits to that form. So if we go over to this section, it's a duplicate of the other page, but I just uh, opted to make this one light box. So I have turned that on and I labeled the button. And that way, when we add this section to the contact page with Will's plugin, we scroll down to that version. It's this one. This section loading content from contact-form-lb, that block is pulling the lightbox form that I put on that other page. 
So that's how that actually works. Now, if we go back down here to the Lightbox Anything version of this, we don't need a code block. In Will Myers plugin, you will need a code block with the code snippet that he gives you, and all you change is the URL slug in it if you don't want to mess with the CSS. You can also add CSS to further customize it. With Lightbox Anything, it's just a little bit simpler, but the syntax is hard to get used to. And what I mean by that is all of the links that trigger the Lightbox Anything code to function and create the pop-up effect, that is just hashtag Lightbox underscore. After that is what you actually put there for the page that it is pulling into the Lightbox. <laughs> so let's back up a step. The hashtag lightbox underscore is the trigger that triggers the code, which makes the pop-up function happen. On the pop-up, that is the slug that you put in after it, and it does not use the backslash or anything prior to that in the link. So I don't need HTTPS, I don't need www, I don't need anything before the .com, just what comes after the .com if it's on my own website. If it's not on my own website, for example, if you wanted to lightbox a YouTube video, you can put the full video link there, including the HTTPS. If you wanted to link to a Vimeo or a, a Loom video or an article that was published about you, <laughs> you can put the full link here. So he has formatting for the different use cases in the instructions for the installation when you buy the plugin. So don't worry, you won't have to figure this out on your own. So the Lightbox Anything can actually work on text. So if I wanted to link this text to the same thing, then I would just type Lightbox underscore and then contact dash form. And then if I hit apply, that will also be a light box to the same form. I can do the same thing with my images. If I come over to the settings panel for the image block, and then on link where it says none, select on image, and then type in that same syntax, that same format, light box underscore contact form and then click off of it and save your changes. So now when I exit out of that, I should be able to scroll down to that bottom option, Lightbox Anything. Remember, we want to always look at Lightbox Anything stuff in full preview. As long as you can see that edit bar option at the top, that white bar where it says edit mode, that's just gonna take you into edit mode if you click on this. So when you're trying to test your light boxes to make sure they're working, make sure you toggle on that full page preview or it will not work. So now that we have it in full screen, if we click contact us, it will trigger the pop-up and load the form that is in that section on the other page. <laughs> if we click the hyperlink, it will do the same thing and it will load it faster because we just loaded it in when we clicked the button. If we close off, out of that, if we click the image, it'll do the same thing. So you can see this one is pretty versatile too, but they're both versatile in two different ways and they are phenomenal options if you just want to have fewer forms across your website that are doing the same things and fewer places to edit or maintain them. <laughs> So the pros for using the built-in form options in Squarespace are that it's super easy to set up. It's super easy to use, even if you don't use plugins or paid plugins to make it extraordinary. It has 18 or 20 different field types. So there's lots of options for you to make whatever form for whatever purpose that you need, including surveys and other options. You can also set it up to work with the email subscriber option if you're using email campaigns. The cons to using a built-in Squarespace form are that there's no file uploader option, although there are workarounds with something like Dropbox file request and uh, the Square websites option for the file uploader. Both of those work pretty well. Submissions can't go to multiple addresses. So if you need multiple people to see the form submissions, they all need to be sharing the same inbox because you can't send it to like hi at launch the damn thing and also support at launch the damn thing, et cetera. 
They're also not usable site-wide. As a native feature of Squarespace, you do need paid plugins that are designed and developed by external third parties to have that kind of functionality like I showed you earlier in the tutorial. So no global access for any one particular form, but you can duplicate them and have the same form on multiple pages using the built-in saved sections option. So that is an another option that you can do as well. You just have duplicates of the form, right? There are of course, the two hacks that I mentioned with Will Myers plugin and SQSP themes plugin. So of course, there are options for that. Some popular use cases for forms are inquiry forms or contact forms, just like um, whatever the message is, what they want from you, which service they're looking for, those kinds of basic things. You can also do basic application forms from jobs to uh programs to wait lists. You can also do basic survey. So there's uh, slider options for survey type responses where you can ask questions and ask for like a scale, sliding scale of answers. There's also broken link reports. Something fun that I like to do is to put a very simple form on the error 404 page that asks them to tell you what they were looking for when they landed on the broken link page. That is just a way for them to submit a broken link report, which is great for busy people that are running businesses and have lots of pages on their website. Broken links are bound to happen. So that's a great way to collect that kind of feedback from people. And then if you want to, you could do a non-required field underneath that with the name and email and ask them if they want a reply. You can also use forms to submit new FAQs. You can do the same kind of form, very simple, just submit a question. And then underneath that, non-required fields for name and email in case they want to reply. That would allow people to submit questions they don't see on your FAQ page, and then you would know which questions are being asked. <laughs> Another option is a suggestion box. I have done this for a few clients and put this on their podcast or blog page so that they can collect topic ideas from people who are on their readership. So there's lots of different options you can use these forms for. I hope that this gives you kind of a deep dive overview of everything that you can do with built-in Squarespace forms and feel empowered to do this and create this process yourself. It is totally doable, even if you're not me. <laughs> even if you're not a professional. And I hope that this tutorial has helped you do that. So um, I'm not going to keep you any longer because I know you're just super anxious to go create this for yourself on your own website, right? <laughs> all right. So that's all I have for you in this video. If you want to learn a little bit more about Squarespace, make sure you check out this video next. <laughs>